Hi, third graders. You are doing such a wonderful job. All of the drawings that were handed in last month were so well done. You really showed me that you understood symmetrical balance really, really well. If you have not completed your symmetrical balance drawing, please complete it before you do this lesson. And if you did complete your symmetrical balance drawing, pause the video and go get it because we're going to add to it today. If you don't have it anymore, then you have a couple of options. Please um, either print what you submitted in Google Classroom, and then you can color on top of that. If you emailed it to me, then you can go into your sent email folder and you can print it from there. And if you lost it from your sent email folder, you can contact me and I can send it to you from my folder. However, if you can't do any of those things, you may need to redo the assignment from last month. And moving forward, please make sure you listen when I ask you to save your work for the next month. So let's pause the video and go find your symmetrical balance drawings. Okay, so for this lesson, we're going to review symmetrical balance. So if you remember, it's when things are the same on the left and the right. So if you draw something on the left side, you repeat it on the right side. And you know what's so funny is I got a lot of faces. So if you were to draw a line of symmetry down the center of your face, what's on the left side is repeated on the right side, unless you wink your eye, and then it's not. Um, so the other things that we're gonna focus on is we're gonna briefly touch upon space. For this assignment, you are going to use the whole space of your paper. So we have something drawn probably in the center. We're going to add color to that and add color all the way around. So if you're doing a great job with space, you will fill the whole space today. So symmetrical balance, same, whatever you color on the left, you're gonna repeat the color on the right. We're gonna fill the space. But if you haven't guessed it, what we're really gonna focus on today is color. So that's the element that we're gonna spend most of our time discussing, but most specifically reviewing from kindergarten, first and second grade, the primary colors and the secondary colors. And if you remember, the primary colors are red, yellow, and secondary is orange, green, and purple. And the primary colors are colors that we can never make, if you remember that from kindergarten, first and second. Those are the colors that you have to buy at the store, and you can use them to make these secondary colors. So if I combine any of these colors, I can make any of these colors, plus a couple of extras. And we can talk about that um, during the assignment. So, go find your symmetrical drawings, get some colors together, crayons will work today, colored pencils or markers. I don't really suggest using paint, but if you can find a way to make it work within the guidelines of the project, then I'm not gonna say no, but I strongly suggest crayons or markers and maybe colored pencils. So go get your supplies and let's get started. For this project, we're going to focus on the principle of balance as a review, and we're also going to take a look at space, which is an element of art, and another element of art, which is color. Most of our focus will be on balance and color, and balance and space are mostly a review, um, and actually color is a review from previous years as well. Balance. We know that this is the equal or similar placement of things on either side of an artwork. The type of balance that we're talking about is symmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance are what is when things are exactly the same on the left side and the right side. You can also have asymmetrical balance, and you can see that everything is even in this picture, but clearly not exactly the same on both sides. And then we have radial balance. Radial balance is really cool because everything is repeated around the center point. So things are the same on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. But as I said, we are going to focus on this project on symmetrical balance. The same on the left side and the right side. Each of these insects has a symmetrical balance. This means they're exactly the same on both sides. We also see symmetrical balance in each of these artworks. And that again means they're exactly the same on both sides. Why do you think that balance is important? Why do you need it in your work?
The next element we're going to talk about is space. Space is the distance or area between, around, above, below, or within things. For this project, the part of space that we focus on is filling the entire space. So when we're making our pictures today, we want to fill the space that we drew last month and we want to make sure we address the background. Which one of these pictures do you find more interesting? The one with the filled up space or the one with a lot of empty space? How do you think that space enhances the artwork? So the last thing we're going to talk about is color, and that's going to be our big focus for this project. What is color anyway? Well, it's what we see when the light shines on an object. Parts of it are bounced off the object and other parts are absorbed by the object. It appears to us as color. So we see all of those rays of light going towards the yellow surface, the green surface, the red surface, and all of the colors are absorbed except for one color which is bounced back towards your eye. That is the color that you can see. What do you think the world would be like without color? So we're going to focus on the two basic groups of colors. The primary colors are one of the groups, which is red, yellow, and blue. And we've been learning about the primary colors since kindergarten. And the primary colors are the very first colors in art. You have to have them before you can do anything. You can't make these colors. Remember, if you don't have them, where do you get them? At the store. And you can use the primary colors to make new colors. The other group we're going to talk about today are the secondary colors. Again, we've been learning about these since kindergarten, and they are purple, green, and orange. The secondary colors come second, and you make them by mixing two primary colors together. So red and blue make purple, yellow and blue make green, red and yellow make orange. If you blend complementary colors, which are opposite, you can make brown. Yellow and purple mixed together make brown. Red and green mixed together make a different looking brown and orange and blue mixed together, they also make a different looking brown. Can you think of another way to make brown? Mix all three primaries. Okay, for our assignment this month, we're going to need our project from last month. So if you need to go and dig it out, this is the time to do it. If you can't find it, I have two solutions. You can A, redo it, so watch the video from last month and do it again quickly, or B, print what you submitted last month and do the color part on top of what you printed. If you can't figure out where to find where you submitted your project, check your file in Google Classroom. It should be in there or in your Google Drive. Or, if you emailed it to me, you may need to go into your sent email folder and find what you sent to me, print it out, and then start. If you can't do that, contact me and I will look into my folders and see if you emailed it to me and send it back to you. If you did not do the assignment last month, you need to do the assignment from last month before you can do it for this month. So. For our materials today, like I said, we're going to need our drawing from last month, and you're going to need colors in the primary colors, plus you may want to use black. That is optional. So your choices are, you can use primary color crayons, you could use primary colored colored pencils, or if you want to, and most of you may not want to choose this option because it might be challenging, 
you may want to use the primary colors in watercolor. If you do, it might be a good idea to cover up the colors that are not the primary colors. I sometimes put, if you remember, a piece of masking tape over, or you can just put a little piece of paper over the ones that you're not going to use. Remember, you're only going to use red, yellow, and blue. And if you choose to use black, I strongly suggest you don't use black paint. So if you choose to use black, you can use a black colored pencil, a black crayon, or a black marker. So those are your choices for materials. And as always, I encourage you to use more than one material. So mixing crayons and colored pencils or watercolors and um, crayons, that always makes things look more dynamic, in my opinion. So pause the video right now and go and get your materials and your drawing from last month. Okay, so our goals for this project, obviously we want everything on the left side to be exactly the same as the right side. We wanna make sure we fill the whole space, not just the drawing, but also the background. And we're adding in a color element at this point. And that means I want you to show me that you understand how to use the primary colors. So not only how to use the primary colors to color red, yellow, and blue, but also I want to see that you can blend colors to make new colors. So the minimum requirement for this project is to pick at least three places where you can blend two primary colors to make a secondary color. So if you want your picture to be mostly primary colors, that's fine. Whatever you draw color on the left side of the project, make sure you also do it exactly the same on the right side. However, I would also like to see that you can blend colors. So find at least three places where you can do that. Okay, so if you are going to make the secondary color of green, if you remember, we're going to blend yellow with blue. I suggest if you do this to color lightly and in layers. So, I'm not pressing too hard. I want to color evenly. And then I want to do the yellow on top of this blue. And I kind of want to do it in two layers. So this is yellow and blue one layer. It's already looking a little greener. Now crayons do not blend perfectly. So you do not need to worry if it doesn't look exactly like green. I'm going to do another layer of blue just to get it really even. And then another layer of yellow. Now this might not be perfectly green, but I really love to look at it because there's a lot of cool colors in there. Now here, I blended yellow and red together to make orange, and I did a layer of yellow, a layer of red, a layer of yellow, and a layer of red. Purple can be tricky. So I'm gonna show you with the colored pencils, um, but you can use the watercolor or the regular crayons for purple, but I do find that I am usually disappointed with my purple results. So if I were the artist, I would just do a little less purple because when you blend red and blue, even though they do make purple, it is difficult to get a purple that you can be really happy with. Feel free to try, don't let me discourage you. Actually, this is better than what it was earlier when I did one with crayons. So maybe if you have some blue and red colored pencils, try that instead. But purple can be a little bit tricky. Now if you remember from the slides, to make brown we would use opposite colors. So we would use colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So that would be red and green, purple and yellow, and blue and orange. But can we use green, purple, and orange today? No, we cannot. So in order to make 
brown, we would mix all three primary colors, which you can see down here. So you would take your yellow, on top of that put a little bit of blue, make sure you're working really lightly because you can always add more, it's just really hard to subtract color, so you can always add more, and then on top of that add a little bit of red and do several layers until you have the results that you are looking for. So these last two spots are brown. Now I just want to quickly go over how we would do this in paint because I just showed you how to do it in crayon and colored pencil. Also, you can take your markers and you can outline anything. I'm using a permanent marker right now because I am planning on painting right here, but at the very end, if you find that some of your details are kind of not sanding out anymore, you might want to hit them with a marker or a crayon or a colored pencil in black. If you are going to paint on top of something though that's black, I would use a crayon or I would use a permanent marker. So here I lost a lot of my beautiful detail. If I go back in and outline it, it really makes a difference. So in order to paint and to blend the colors, we need to make sure we keep a clean brush. I always suggest that if yellow is one of your two colors, use yellow first, because we don't wanna get our yellows very, very dirty. So use yellow first, and then if you're going to blend blue or red into the yellow, use very little yellow. I mean, very little blue, very little red, and you can always add more, but you can't get rid of it. So painting might not be for everyone for this one because you have a lot less control. So I'm going to use a very little bit of red while it's still the yellow is still wet. I'm going to blend. I can add a little more if I need it. I'm going to blend it in. And you know what? I'm going to do the other side with the blue. Oh, I used too much blue, so I'm quickly going to clean my brush and wipe it off. I don't want to have too much water. Don't forget to wipe your brush every time. Remember the little song we used to sing in Chris kindergarten? Clean, clean, clean. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Color, color, color. Paint, paint, paint. Remember everything you do on the left side, you want to repeat on the right side. And I will trace over this with marker when it's dry because I obviously forgot to just now. A little up oh, too much, get a little bit of water, clean my brush, wipe it off. No more color, just spread out what I have there. A little more color. And we're not, I want to tell you, don't forget the back of your picture, the background of your picture. So we want to think about the whole page. And you don't necessarily have to use secondary colors. They can be primary colors, okay? But I do not want you going in your crayon box or your paints or your colored pencils and pulling out brown or purple or green or orange, please. If you need those colors, show me that you know how to make them, okay? Now, if you choose to, you can outline with a black marker or a crayon. Make sure your entire picture and background is colored neatly, and be sure that you only use the primary colors and blend them to make the secondary colors. So a few reminders. Don't forget that when you're painting, if you choose to paint, make sure you clean your brush every time because you want your paints to look clean at the end of your session as well. So don't get too into mixing the colors that you forget to 
clean your brush. Of course, it's absolutely fine if you only use crayons or only use colored pencils. Use what you have. I used all three plus marker, and I think that each section looks really interesting, and if the whole entire picture was done in the same material, it would be absolutely fine. Show me that you can blend colors and show me that you know how to use the primary colors. So before you submit your work, it is really important to take a look at the rubric, which is on the right-hand side of the assignment, to make sure you're going to get your best grade. Check to make sure it's balanced. Is everything on the left side exactly the same as the right side? Check to make sure that your space is completely filled. So you didn't leave your background white, you didn't leave a big empty spot, everything is filled. And make sure that you used the primary colors only. Possibly added in black just to enhance it, but all of the secondary colors were made by mixing the primary colors together. Remember, I am looking for three places at the very least where you mixed two colors together to make a new color, but you can absolutely do more than three. The last thing that I'm looking for is your craftsmanship. I look for this in all of your artwork. Make sure your picture is well drawn. Make sure it's carefully colored. There are some spots in here that I didn't do the best, but I tried my best. That's what I'm looking for. Make sure that your colors are made from carefully blended colors. It's evenly colored. There's no white space left and the background is complete. Please let me know if you need any help. If you need supplies or if you would like to do a video meeting where I could talk to you more about your project or help you solve any problems. Don't forget to submit your work and enjoy the process. Be as creative as you want to be.